Hey everyone, how's it going? Dennis Cortez here. Today's video is a pretty cool one. Today I will be going over how I got into product design. This topic has been requested a couple times. I've told a few people here and there and it's been on a couple podcasts, but I thought I'd put it here on YouTube for the first time. So I know it's been requested a lot, like I said, so I'm excited to chat about this today. So let's get right into it. So if you didn't know, before I got into design, I actually wanted to be a rap producer at the beginning of college. I went to school for music business. Uh, I ended up switching my degree. I went to college specifically to be a rap producer. And while I was there, you know, I needed to brand myself, kind of get in touch with other producers, get in touch with different rappers and whatnot. So I needed a way to brand myself. So the first thing I did, I pulled open Photoshop, which first of all was my first mistake. You should be using a vector tool if you're gonna make logos. And I made probably the worst logo I have ever seen. It was like black, red, and purple in terms of the color palette that I use. So obviously not off to a good start. But the one thing I will say about this project is that it really just sparked something in me for designs. For me at the time, like I said, I was mainly working on music. So it was nice to get a different creative itch. I had no idea what design was from that perspective. It was just something that really excited me outside of music. So I ended up pursuing that. So during that time, while I was still working on music stuff, I ended up working with a lot of YouTubers and doing a lot of design work for Call of Duty YouTubers at the time. So back in that day, it was uh, pretty big, pretty popular, and a lot of people were actually getting into design through that. So I was making like YouTube banners, logos, making a couple bucks here and there and just trying out different things. But along with that, I ended up getting into branding and illustration work. So it was something that was a lot of fun for me, just making either branding for actual projects or just making some fake example ones that I did for fun. And I did a lot of illustration work, a lot of iconography, and I was putting out stuff almost every day on Dribbble. Outside of my classes, that was actually what I was most excited about once I was done with class. I was super excited to go back to my dorm, kind of work on design projects, and just practice almost every night. I was putting out stuff every day on Dribble, like I said. I ended up going to a Dribble meet in downtown Nashville one night, and I met someone that was the owner of a design studio called Verasa. So at the time, nothing really happened. We met, we chatted, uh, kind of hit it off, and ended up staying in touch for the next few months. So we met up after a few months, and at the time I was looking for a job to do outside of school, so I was actually applying to Panda Express, uh, which is just like a Chinese chain restaurant here, and I was just gonna work there like as a chef um, and being able to make a couple bucks here and there. So at the time I had told the founder of Verasa that I was gonna do that. He actually offered me a job right on the spot, so I ended up being able to work on stuff with him. It was really nice to have a mentor at that time because I had never worked on product design whatsoever. Ever. So I had no idea what that was. I had no idea how to get into it. And he kind of took me under his wing and let me work on projects with him. So quickly, I actually got really into product design. It was a big enjoyment for me, blending business and creative passions. I ended up taking that really seriously and working on it nights and weekends. Like any free time I had, any spare time I had, I wasn't really going out and partying or anything like that because I'm very introverted. So that wasn't my thing. But being at my dorm, trying to work on my design work and kind of honing that craft was really my focus at that time. So for my last two years of college, I ended up working at the design studio called Verasa that I mentioned, and I got to work on quite a few projects there. I worked on, I think, products for about 20 different clients, and we actually got to work on some of our own products which was really cool as well because I got to get introduced to like side projects basically, just working on my own stuff and being able to hone that craft outside of full-time work. So once I graduated, I actually got super lucky. I ended up landing a job at this place called Satchel Health. It was a telemedicine company bringing better healthcare to skilled nursing facilities. And I joined as one of the first designers there and actually got to build the design team there. And why that was helpful for me is because it was so early on in my career and I had not much experience. Because of that, I had to learn everything super quickly. So I was reading articles as much as I could, practicing things, talking to people, getting to learn new things about product design. And it was so much fun for me just being at that level where you don't really know, you don't really know the skill set yet, but you're super excited and you have the, the drive for it. 
that was a lot of fun for me. So it actually really pushed me to learn a lot in those first couple years that I was doing design work at an in-house product. So I worked there for two years as well, same as Verasa, and then I ended up getting a job at Meta Lab. So if you don't know, Meta Lab is one of the most popular product design agencies in the world. They got to do a little bit of work for Slack. They worked on Facebook Messenger, Uber Eats. I got to work on a couple cool projects there, um, including the ones that I mentioned. Uh, besides Slack, and then also I worked on um, some random ones that... Quick note, sorry if you saw the background change. Uh, I had an issue with my memory card, so had to change up some stuff real quick, but we're all good now, so back to it. So when I worked at MetaLab, it was actually super helpful because it gave me so much insight into working with clients and that client to designer relationship and kind of how that would work. And as a result, I think I'm a lot better prepared for how I handle like working with different clientele and actually working at in-house product teams that I do now. So without going into too much detail, I actually ended up parting ways with MetaLab just because I was really overworked. I was working quite a bit of hours each week. Um, I was up to probably around 80 or 90 hours a week. It just wasn't a healthy work-life balance for me, as you can imagine. And as a result, a lot of my work was actually going downhill that I was producing at MetaLab. So we just decided it wasn't a good fit for either of us. And I just ended up leaving that place. Soon afterward, I was actually taking a little bit of a break after that. And I actually ended up randomly finding Dave, which is the place that I worked at previously. Um, it's a fintech startup that used to give advances to people on their paychecks and when I ended up joining we actually turned it into a full-on bank which it is now and it's maintaining and growing and building out different features and whatnot. So I ended up joining there as the first product designer, the head of design there and I. We hit it off really well at the beginning and just ended up being a really good project for me to work on and come in on. So I worked remotely there for a little bit and then ended up moving to Los Angeles last year and was working in office there for a little over a year. Uh, it was a great job for me, but it didn't end up working out just for a couple different reasons that I won't go into in this video. Um, but I learned a ton there and built the design system from the ground up basically and had to work around a lot of constraints that the finance team was working with there. So it was a lot of fun working there and I stayed there for about a year. During my time there at Dave, uh, Mothership, which is the place that I'm working at now, actually ended up randomly reaching out to me and letting me know that they had an opening for their lead product designer role. So at first I actually wasn't super interested. If you don't know, Mothership is a place for logistics and freight. We do a lot of streamlining around the freight routes and just the freight business as a whole. So not super exciting once you first kind of hear about it. It doesn't seem like the most exciting thing and most fulfilling thing that I would have worked on, but I do love working on obscure products, which is part of the reason I've worked on so many different industries. It's a lot of fun for me to learn about new places and new industries. So I thought it could be a good thing just for me to maybe do the interviews and see how that goes. So I ended up doing a couple interviews there. I actually ended up being pleasantly surprised with how put together the team was there, how organized everything was already, and just the potential for all the things that we could work on there. So I ended up leaving Dave and joining Mothership about a year ago. I joined last, well, last year now, it's the new year, but December of 2019, I ended up joining Mothership and have been there for a little over a year now. So I've helped grow the team. Uh, we're up to three designers now and it's going really well. Um, I got to work on so many different things from our new web app that we just released a couple months ago. I actually got to work on the design system from the ground up and build that almost entirely myself. Um, and now, obviously now it's being maintained by a couple different designers, but it was really fulfilling to be able to work on that from the beginning. And I'm actually working on our new mobile app now and doing the exact same thing. So working on everything from scratch uh, with one of our other designers there. So all that to say, I've been working on product design now for almost nine years and it is still one of the most fun things that I've ever been able to experience in my life. And if you're early in your product design career or even mid-level or whatever, I think you can agree and I really encourage you to keep going on that path because it is so fulfilling to work on things that impact people's lives, 
to a different level than something like branding or illustration would. While they obviously have their places and they even help a lot with product design, I think that being a product designer as a whole, it's just, it's really great for people that have a business perspective and want to work on the business side of things, but also bring in creative aspects and systematizing them. It's really good for me because I'm, I feel like I'm a split brain where I'm more, I'm not like leaning towards the left or right brain in terms of creative versus analytical. I feel like I have a bit of both. So for me, product design fits that very, very well. I hope this was helpful. I hope it's good to see like my experience and how I've been able to get into the product design world. Like I said, it is different for everybody. And no matter where you are on your product design career, I think we can all agree that it just, it's good to have all this inclusion and diversity in terms of people's backgrounds and where they're coming from. So that's something that I really enjoy about working in product design and the design industry as a whole. So I hope this video was helpful. Let me know what other videos you wanna see in the future and I'll be sure to make them. And yeah, be sure to subscribe for more videos, leave a like if you enjoyed it and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.